All right, so I'm making another video for problem 2.31 out of John Taylor's mechanics textbook. Before I start, if you could please like the video and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. The channel's actually been doing quite well recently, and I want to post more videos for you guys. Uh, and also, if you'd like to suggest a problem, probably the easiest way to do that is to ask me on Twitter, at Physics Helping. I literally just made it like 45 minutes ago, so go check it out. Okay, but now let's get into the problem. So what do we have? We have a baseball of mass M, which is given as 600, oops, 600 grams. And we're given the diameter, uh, that's 24 centimeters. Part A says find the terminal speed. So V terminal for a vertical drop, which is what we have. Uh, for a quadratic drag, so in this case, that's what we're working with. A baseball is large enough to ignore the linear and just focus on the quadratic term. So the terminal velocity, and this is given in the book, is mg over c square root. And this is equation 2.53. So mg is pretty obvious what that is. c is the coefficient on the quadratic term uh, portion of our force. So earlier in the chapter, it tells us C is equal to gamma d squared. This was equation 2.4. Gamma is just a constant. Well, it depends on where you're at, but we take it as a constant. A 0.25 newtons times second squared over meters to the fourth. This was equation 2.6, I believe, out of the textbook. And D, okay, that's the diameter that's given to us. All right, so that's pretty easy. This is actually just kind of plugging in at this point. Um, this is equal to oops, the square root of mg over gamma d squared. Everything is given. And when I plug that in, I get about 20.2 meters per second so go ahead you can check that I feel like that's a little fast I actually kind of want to plug that in again just to see if maybe I accidentally wrote down or converted incorrectly so I'm actually going to do that really quick Five times the diameter. Entirely possible I plugged this in wrong. And no, I still get that. Okay, so that's completely fine. Just looked a little weird. Um, okay, so that is your terminal speed. And then part B, so part B says, if it's dropped from a 30 meter tower, how long does it take to hit the ground? How fast is it going when it does so? Okay. So I'm not going to compare it with the vacuum, but you could do that with just uh, physics one stuff, basically. So for part B, right, our free body diagram looks a little something like this. Gravity pulling down, some drag force, oops, and we'll let down be positive. So in this case, or for Newton's second law, we get this equation. And I'll just say that in a vacuum, I'm not gonna do this on this channel, but in a vacuum, it's just this. So it's very similar, just there's not that term here. Okay. So dividing out by the mass, we can see that V dot is equal to G minus C over M V squared. And if we want to write this in terms of the terminal velocity, the terminal we said was the square root of mg over c, right? So if we solve for the variable c, so you square both sides um, equal to mg over c, so c is equal to mg 
over the terminal velocity squared. And you can plug that into here. So once we plug that into here, there's a common, first off the masses cancel, and then we can factor out a g, and what we get is v dot equals g times one minus v squared over the terminal velocity squared, okay? Now, the way that you could do this is by just writing this as, of course, dv by dt, and doing separation of variables. Uh, the problem is, even though this is separable, the integral is kind of nasty. Uh, you could plug it into a computer if you wanted to, um, but I have a feeling that's not really um, the point that people are looking for. So for that, what we'll do is you could solve this and then you could integrate it again and you'll just get the equation they get in the book of v terminal squared over g the natural log of cosine hyperbolic gt over v terminal. I did work this out just out of my own curiosity. Um, so if this is something that you feel is important for you to understand how to go from here to here, then maybe I can do that in a separate video because it, uh, it is quite a bit of work. But regardless, let's go ahead and solve this. So what we wanted to find is the time it takes to go that distance. So to do that, we obviously just need to solve. We need to solve for um, what we have here. So we can say y times g over v terminal squared is the natural log of hyperbolic cosine gt over v terminal. And then of course, raise to the power e, and you get e to the power yg over v terminal squared is equal to a cosine hyperbolic. So I will take cosine hyperbolic inverse of both sides is equal to gt over v terminal, or just solving t is equal to v terminal g cosine hyperbolic inverse e to the yg over v terminal, okay? So that is how you can find your time. And all of this is given, we know all of these values. So we can actually just go ahead and plug this in. And if you plug in these values, you should get about 2.78 seconds, uh, which is just the time it takes to go that far. Okay. So now what we want to do is, and if you wanted to compare it with the vacuum, um, you could just do your kinematic equations where your y is 30 meters so you could do uh, t is 2y over g the square root of this and let me plug that in actually I'm kind of curious square root of 2 times 30 over 9.81. This is about 2.47. So this is for a vacuum. This is if there were no drag. And that makes sense that that time is uh, less than with drag force. Obviously, the drag is going to slow it down. So that makes sense for the most part. Um, and then what we can do is use our equation for velocity, which you get from this step here, the one that I just kind of glossed over. But if you work through that, what you'll find, and this is also given in the book, this is a equation, I'll write it down here in a second, but the velocity is equal to V terminal tangent hyperbolic 
GT over V terminal. So this is equation 2.57 out of the textbook. Again, if that's something, that's all coming from over here. So if you had concerns with this guy or what I just wrote, that's coming from that differential equation. And again, if that's something you were really wanting to know, then I can work that out. Uh, but if you do that and you plug it in, you get 17.7 .7 meters per second. So now you know how fast it's going when it hits the ground. Um, if you wanted to know uh, how fast it was going when it hits the ground in a vacuum, well, you could just use conservation of energy and say that 1 half mv squared equals mgy. The masses drop. You can multiply over by 2 and square both sides. And you get V is equal to 2GY, square root. And if you plug that in, you get about 24.2 meters per second. And again, that makes sense. That's bigger because there's no drag force accelerating the baseball up. So that also makes sense. Um, so yeah, just to summarize the problem... The part A was very plug and chug. Part B, you wrote down Newton's second law. We substituted Z or C in terms of the terminal velocity. And then after that, we solved or just trusted the textbook of the differential equation given to get a function for position. We solved for time, no problem. Compared it with our using our kinematic equations. Then we used the velocity terms that the book was given, that the book gave us, just plugged in to get your velocity, and then using conservation of energy, you're able to find the velocity that would have been had there not been the non-conservative force, friction, the drag force, going against it. So hopefully that, made all, uh, that all made sense, and again, if it did, please like and subscribe. Thank you.